and eligible. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll begin, I'll introduce myself. Um, my name is Jesse Williams. I'm a member of the Squamish Nation and I am also the Director of Business Development and Communications for the New Relationship Trust, which is a not-for-profit Indigenous organization and we provide capacity building uh, funding for many different ways for nation building and capacity building to First Nations across BC. Uh, I am honored to, to, to be a part of this virtual circle with you. Marie. Yes, and my name is Marie Alemo, and I am the Director of Operations at the New Relationship Trust. I've been here since 2018, so um, go, I just, I entering into my fourth year soon. So what I do with the New Relationship Trust is I basically, right now I do, I'm kind of an everywhere person, um, but that was just as of recently for the last six, six months, I've been in the director position. Prior to that, I was the, um, the program officer, the senior program officer for uh, direct support, our YES program scholarships and our golf tournament. So I've kind of got a mix of everything, but um, yeah, that's myself. Good to meet you all. And Lisa, introduce yourself. Uh, my ancestral name is Tawasawit. My English name is Lisa Nguyen. Um, I'm also a Squamish Nation member and I come to you today uh, representing New Relationship Trust. I am the Director of uh, Programs and Services um, I started here in the middle of August, so I'm fairly new to our team. Um, it's, it's really exciting. Um, previously, I was the manager for the Squamish Nation Education, Employment and Training um, Department, and I was there for a very long time. So I'm excited to be here today. Mm -hmm. Perfect. To you, Thank, you. Thank you so much. So my, um, we can maybe open up our presentation with someone doing that for us or do you have that yeah i know i'll do that for us i'll just share my screen quickly thank and, you so much um, you're welcome and while we're getting that situated um i'd like to open up the circle for those of you who are here to witness this kind of sharing to introduce yourselves if you're interested uh good morning my name is kiana watts i'm coming in from st alice first nation this morning um i am a governance slash um secretariat beautiful thank you <laughs> morning ernest darwin i'm coming from lillowet of the statlium uh i'm from Nequatqua, and my current role i'm an iset program manager and but my real work is really in nation building and helping to realize our inherent rights and self-government. Um, and I have my backgrounds in public administration. And uh, most recently, I just stepped down from the First Nations Health Council. And I've done some work with NRT and some of your different programs. So I'm just here to see what's coming up. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Anyone else inspired to, to introduce yourself? If not, that's totally okay. Good morning. My name is Michelle. My ancestral name is Wilganeskaner. It means sunrise. I am from the Kikatlan Nation. I'm Gunheta. I have the privilege to live, work, play on Musqueam territory, and I work at Indigenous Services Canada. Lovely. Anyone else? Okay, perfect. With that, we'll get started. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Um, how we're going to share with you is we're going to begin um, by now talking a little bit. We've done introductions. We'll now begin to share. I'll provide a brief overview about our governance structure, just so that you can understand how we operate and what it is that informs the work that we do serving BC First Nations. Then Marie will take over and talk about our NRT funding uh, programs, like the different kinds of programs that we support, and then focus on nation building and how that's the program that community comprehensive plans come under when it comes to applications for funding to support that work. And then uh, I'll 
close it up by um, look, sharing a little bit about our strategic planning, like where we want to go and some of the growth that we're, we're looking to have so that we can be responsive to community and BC First Nations needs and then end with a, some time to have some question and answers. Um, as always, Lisa and Re, if um, either one of us forget something, we'll just jump in and, and just uh, pitch in where, where some of us kind of uh, might have forgot something. Thank you. To begin, so the New Relationship Trust has a number of different um, voices and, and, and guiding principles and, and documents and things that um, help us direct uh, the work that we do and how we engage with BC First Nations. Um, it's important to note that we were established, New Relationship, New Relationship Trust was established back in 2006 through BC legislation. Um, and it was um, leadership councils in BC, such as the First Nations Summit, Union BC Indian Chiefs, um, Assembly First Nations BC, uh, that came together to uh, voice that th this organization, this type of community, NRT, was needed to provide enhanced services to uplift BC First Nations. We are a politically neutral organization. We don't represent political interests um, on behalf of Indigenous peoples or anything. What we do do is we make take great care to understand what needs are in BC and then we do our best to, to provide programming and funding programming support to help meet those needs. We received in our inaugural year in 2006 100 million dollars um, which we've invested um, and what we do is we offer funding and programming and our operations that's based on the interest we make off of that and then we still have that money in full investment so that we can continue on for many, many years. Uh, we are a not-for-profit organization. Uh, we're not a legal trust. Uh, and the, 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 our name sometimes confuses people a little bit given it has the word trust in it, but we're, we're not a, we're a not-for-profit organization, meaning that we can um, accept donations and provide tax receipts uh, to partners who want to help support and contribute to uplifting BC First Nations in a way that's relevant to BC First Nations as determined by BC First Nations, which is extremely uh, special place to be. We have seven board members and approximately 10 staff um, that help provide these services. It's quite a, a, lean, a lean team, a real powerful team, and we wear many hats, but um, as many of you probably do too, there's a lot, a lot of need and we're really passionate about being responsive to that. So we really do feel thankful that we have Indigenous leaders from different places and spaces and, and a non-Indigenous leader on our board that helps um, guide and support the work that we're doing. And th those board members are um, selected by the leadership uh, councils that brought us together back in 2006. They elect it. We don't elect that. The, they elect who um, is nominated to be part of the board for NRT. We, like I shared earlier, we're capitalized with a hundred million dollar fund that we got in 2006 that we just use interest, we invest wisely and we use that interest and give a hundred percent of that back. Um, minus just the small uh, operational costs that we have. We also provide non repayable grants to BC First Nations uh, and that is the main, the main core of the service we provide is we provide funding. Uh, to BC First Nations to do the work that they need to do and just need some additional support in making that happen. We are um, uh, governed by board approved bylaws, policy and procedures, uh, which we think are, are ever evolving. And our, our leader is uh, reviewing all these with guidance and, and input from our board to help make sure that we are up to date and that we can respond to the lived realities of the needs of BC First Nations right now. And that's the blessing of being a part of NRT and the blessing of this organization. There's not a ton of things that get in the way of allowing us to be innovative and responsive to BC First Nations. There's always a way to, for us to find a way to make it happen. It just might take a little while. If we're um, being asked to support in a way that we currently don't, we want that information so we can understand the need and then evolve to be able to meet it. That is our goal. Thank you so much, Jesse. And that really leads well into this next section, which is um, every three years, the NRT 
does um they go across the province meet with the various first nations different regions and asks what their needs are and we're actually going to be um, undertaking another one of these this year another strategy session so based on um, the last the one we had three years ago these initiatives um they're actually they're continued um, from previous ones but they're based on the need that we heard first nations um, vocalize so there are uh, seven here. Um, nation building is the one which I'll go into more detail in the next slide, but it's it's our it's our amalgamation. I don't know if any of you are uh, have applied for funding in the past, but it used to be direct support and nation government governance, and we combined the two um, to have a more streamlined application. Um, and then uh, we have an elders grant program to support elders activities and well being, uh, youth grant program. Uh, which is to enhance the Indigenous knowledge, culture, abilities, and skills of Indigenous youth across BC. Uh, language grant program, which is one of our newer programs, it's to support uh, activities aimed at revi oh, oopsies, language revival um, amongst youth. And then K-12 to uh, supports Indigenous projects delivered by First Nations. And then post-secondary education, this is our uh, scholarship. So we provide uh, bursaries to certificates, trades, associate degrees, and certificate program students. And then scholarships, which supports our undergrad, master's, and doctorate students. And the funding comes from a combination of NRTF support. And then we rely heavily on partnership funding as well, so from outside organizations. And then our equity matching program. This is this is delivered um, and run by the Aboriginal financial institutions. What NR, NRT does is we provide matching funding. So they review the applications, they send them to NRT, and they say these are projects, um, businesses, entrepreneurs that we would like to support. And then NRT provides them with with matching funding. So to go into a bit more detail on uh, the nation building program. So these are this program basically supports First Nations in BC to achieve their um, definition of nationhood sovereignty. So it's um, we really rely on the nations to tell us what where they need the support. So this is a program that's gone through a lot of changes over the past year. We've tried to remove a lot of barriers. Um, and increase the scope of eligibility for nations. Uh, the, I, we're always so open to hearing, if, if there's something that we've deemed ineligible in the past and the nation is really, really needing that support, we are so open and flexible and have made a lot of, um, a lot of accommodations to, to support specific needs that we never had in the past. So one of the um, one of the projects that fall under this scope are comprehensive community plans, um, which we've seen quite a few of in our past. As you see there, we've we've funded and supported approximately thirty um, to date since we've begun funding. And I wanted to touch on how to ensure that the application is is strong coming to the NRT, so that you have your highest chances of of success to receive funding, and. Um, saying all of this you know once the application comes in we're very open and happy to support where we're needed so if you want your application reviewed at that time too um we do provide that um service as well so the when i was going over the plans the ones that did really well had very detailed and well thought out project plans and steps um within the application so we could see clearly um from the beginning to the end how the project was was going to be run that year um, obviously submit a complete application. So uh, the application um, is what one of the documents you need to submit a quote if the professional or consultant quote is over um, $10,000 if the service fees 10 grand or higher we need a, a, a very detailed quote for that as well that's that's something that we that we look for. Um, so the nation each fiscal year um, is eligible for up to $50,000 um, in funding for that year so it's uh, each nation can apply for one project um, or if, if it could be multiple, let's say the nation wants to have two different projects. So let's say they want to do a CCP for 25 grand and then a strategic plan in a different area for 25 grand. You can have those two together, but the maximum amount the nation can uh, receive is 50 grand in a fiscal year. 
So for this year, the deadline is December 7th or until funds are exhausted. And right now we're really, really close to um, exhausting our funds. We have about $160,000 left um, to spend. So if any of you are thinking of applying for this funding right now, I would suggest reaching out to myself or Lisa after this and, and we can discuss you know, how, how to get an application as quickly as possible for, for you. If not, there's gonna be another round uh, coming in April, 2021. All right. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to add to that, Lisa? Lisa is the director that manages and oversees um, all these programs. It's just she's new, so we're here as a team um, to support each other. Is there anything you want to add, though, Lisa? Yeah, our scholarships and bursaries uh, for post-secondary students, um, that deadline closes today at noon. And then we're still accepting applications for K-12 and elders and language as well. So. I could uh, put my email up here in the chat if um, you would like either myself or Marie to share the application with you. And then we can have a conversation offline if you have any further questions. Perfect, beautiful. Before we move on to um, um, any, uh, the strategy and looking ahead, I just want to remind um, and share with each of you that we're looking for partnerships in regards to this work. What we're trying to do is be better at when we partner with the First Nations community and offer funding for your initiative, for example, for a CCP, we're looking for communities who are comfortable to share that journey and experience so that that could be knowledge put forward for other communities. So whatever way that might look like, whatever way a community would be comfortable to do that, that is something we're really hoping to do more like a better job at is having communities share their experience with this from the what happens with, with the funding and, and the work that the community is doing to, to help other communities be more empowered. Um, so that is something that we're, we're hoping to inspire more of. Next, I'll just talk briefly about our strategy and looking ahead. We want to leave more time for questions than we do talking. Um, uh, so, but quickly, we're working on a rebranding process right now. Uh, we're um, looking at new application platform, application processes, which Lisa is in the process of nurturing, and that is to really decolonize and really indigenize the application process and make sure that it's it's as accessible and relevant to BC First Nations as possible. We don't have to do things the way government and everyone else does it, who gets money from the government. We're trying to not be like that, um, which is so exciting because everything I've done before this has been governed by external guidelines because of the funding we get. We don't have to do that at NRT. So we are open to feedback to Lisa about application process once you go through it, if you do that, to give feedback about the experience and. And we warmly welcome suggestions for how to improve that process to be more, uh, more relevant to your needs. Just so, so you know, we're very excited to have that uh, kind of opportunity. Uh, I've worked in a post-secondary institution. I've worked in community um, all my life and it's never been so, had so much freedom to be able to be responsive. And we have a leader who, and a board that supports that. It's very exciting. We're also um, revamping our website. Uh, we apologize if you go on it and it, it's a bit dated, it's not as interactive um, as it's going to be in the next few months. Hopefully we'll launch a new website in the new year. So please keep your eyes posted um, for that. We're also working on a, a social media strategy and a resource library for First Nations so that First Nations can access uh, and, and take a look at the applications they previously applied for as a nation because we understand sometimes there's different departments within the nation who may have access, access funding for some of these things and that, that, that communication isn't being um, shared so you'll be able to access kind of that and other details in an appropriate way moving forward. We're also um, uh, doing a renewed program structure. Uh, we're, like I shared, we're working to remove barriers and establish multi-year funding streams so that it's not one and done, that we're hoping for projects that are larger, that communities will be able to apply for a couple, like a multi-year funding to see a project through. Um, so that's exciting. We're working on that, as well as my role, my main role is to build strategic partnerships and, and collaborations so that we can partner with public and private sector and Indigenous communities to enhance funding for BC First Nations. And any way we can do that, we can be innovative and responsive in that, it's quite exciting. Also our clean energy and clean uh, climate change 
um, projects. Uh, there's a lot of significant effort being put into capitalized on federal and provincial funding to administer and fund indigenous clean energy initiatives in BC with which we have a whole other team that specializes in that. We just wanna share a little bit of a broad scope about some of the stuff that we do. And next slide. That might be, oh, is that yeah, so I mean, that's it. This is your time. Please take note of our contact information. If it's about partnerships, um, people, if you have organizations or communities uh, uh, that you think, whether they're Indigenous or non-Indigenous, that might want to partner and do and know about this work, and there might be a collaboration, please share my contacts. It's, it's jwilliams at nrtf.ca. And for programs and services at our operations, there's Lisa's and Marie's um contact information now we would like to open up the space for any questions you might have this is your time um anything we can do to help clarify anything we've shared or just broad questions about anything we'd love to to invite you to to do so hi hello this is ben mckay uh i was just wondering uh like where are you located on any tribal lands or are you just in, in, on a regular office space? We are located on the Tsleil Tooth uh, Nation reserve lands in North Vancouver, just by uh, it, just past Second Arrows Bridge. They have a beautiful brand new um, administration building and we rent uh, a floor on the bottom uh, of that building. It's a beautiful location. Oh, okay, so it's you're, you're, you're paying rent to the First Nation? Correct. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for asking that question. Sorry for uh, not uh, clarifying that earlier. Is I'm trying to set up something similar to that is uh, on our First Nation in Winnipeg is it, we're trying to set up a billing like that, then maybe uh, uh, we can develop a, a, a trust corporation like yours and have them rent off of us too. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. It makes sense, right? We're keeping keeping the funding in, in a way that uplifts BC First Nations uh, any way we can. So we work hard to do that. Yeah. We're pretty special. We're pretty, we're pretty blessed to be NRT and to have the mandate we have. We can be more responsive and do it the right way as we evolve and grow to continue to learn what that looks like. Right. So do, how, how do you do your funding? You do, do you do it like the bank when they build a house, you build a certain level and then the inspector comes and looks at it. And if you meet that level and then the next round comes through, is that how it is? No, thankfully we don't need to be so paternalistic like that. I experience that as being a barrier. Um, and we're so thankful we don't have to do that. It's determined by you what your goals and objectives are for your initiative. And it's, not, it's almost a it's almost a shocking concept, right? Like, no, you determine, you let us know through your application what success looks like for you in that project. And we look to you to let us and share that with us at the end. Um, you get the funding and then we we ask at the end of the year or at the end of the term, hopefully it'll be multi, multi-year funding down the road. And we just ask for you to share uh, with us some of the outcomes and the, and the successes gained from that. Um, I'll let Marie speak to that a little bit more if I've forgotten something. No, that's ex exactly what I was going to touch on. It's just that it's yeah we we looked we look to the community that's receiving funding to tell us what yeah what I don't want to repeat it but exactly what the success looks like. But I also wanted to mention that I know that there's no other organization like NRT within Canada that I'm that we're aware of. So if you had any questions, if you wanted to look at maybe our organization, how it works, how we started, I'm happy to have a deeper conversation with you offline too. Um, to see how there's the potential to part uh, to get this up and coming up and going in other provinces. Yes, that's what I, I would like to see here because uh, a lot of it is this a lot of mishmash government policy that you would have to find your niche in rather is it rather something that is like focus for First Nations, you know, that's what I would like to see. Absolutely. Yeah. And I feel like we're, we have that we have that opportunity because there's no external policies and guidelines dictating how we service BC First Nations. It's a very unique and special um, opportunity that we have. Any other questions about CCPs, about accessing funding, about our organization, about follow-up, feedback?
Anything else that you want to share, Marie and uh, Lisa? No, so Just that I'm, you know, if there's any other questions that if you think of something after this is done, reach out to me anytime. I'm happy to have a deeper conversation over email, phone, whatever works best for you. Go ahead, Ben. You had another question? Yeah, because you're talking, you guys are uh, pretty streamlined for your administration. Like, how many of you are you are employed there? About 10 of ten. us. Yeah. 10 of us. 10 of us. And it, uh, 100 million for all the BC First Nations, right? Yeah, 100 million invested. And what we use the interest. And I think it's about, is it about six and a half or seven million, ladies? I can't remember. It's seven and a half. So seven and a half million each year we out, we use for funding and administration. That's what we take out. That's our interest that we that we use. Okay. And then uh, <clears throat> once you and then you spend all your all your allotments. So is it based on like if I, if I say I wanted a project and then you guys funded me, but it's multi year. Would the funding come out of that one year and or would it be spread out through the, the years? Like? That's the program that we're currently developing and haven't flushed that all out yet, but that is what we're working on to figure out how that will happen. I imagine just innately that it would probably come out of money needs to be spent in that fiscal year. So I'm imagining it, it would likely come out of the year that it's going to be used. Oh, um, the year it's applied for or your year used down the line. That's what I was thinking. I'd imagine just intuitively because of general accounting processes, it would probably be the year that it's used. The application sits for that year and the money allotted for that year. And then the next year it would, would be budgeted out of that. The thing that we're trying to do right now, which we're, we're working really hard at is building strategic partnerships and to invite more uh, partners and donors and funders to be a part of uh, donating to NRT so that we can do more. Like we're looking for ways to in increase our, our um, available funding each year. So we're working on that as well. Yeah, because some years it, like the, it won't come up as 6.7 million, it'll be like 5 million, like some mm -hmm. years. Totally, yeah. To make up the, the gap there, if you mm. want to continue doing the work that you're doing, right? Plus two. hundred percent. Plus two with inflation right now is, is gone up so high with the uh, cost of living and everything. It's true, completely true. And we're so lucky that the CEO of NRT is a, a financial uh, guru and very well educated in, um, in matters to do with investment and funding. So that really helps us. He's helping, he's been here a year, right? So we're, we're, we're doing a lot of growth. We're in the growth phase right now. Um, we've been in operational phase for a long time. Uh, I'm new to this role too. I'm six months in. My, my position and Lisa's position are both new to the organization. And so is Marie's, right? So, uh, to some extent. So the organization's going through a growth phase. And these are those one financial income and enhancing income is one of the areas that we're, we're growing, we're planning to grow um, with. Sounds good. I think Ernest may have had a question earlier, but I don't know if he's here still. I think he's gone. One of the other initiatives that we do, if, if, if there's no questions specifically about CCPs or, or any other funding is maybe to touch base a little bit on our, our YES program, Marie, because it's something I think that's really special that I don't remember if we identified it. If we did, I missed it. Um, yeah, so it's, it's one of the, uh, we didn't identify it on the slides, but it's one of the national programs that we have, the only national program that we have at the NRT. So YES stands for the Youth Entrepreneur Symposium. And what it, what it does is it brings Indigenous youth from across Canada uh, to a four day, three day event. So they arrive on the Monday, they leave on Friday and it programs from Tuesday to Thursday. And it's all about, um, youth empowerment, entrepreneur empowerment. And when we say youth, we mean 19 till, it's been 30 years old, but we're gonna increase it to 35, but it's such a special event. Um, we get about 150 delegates uh, each year and they participate in entrepreneur challenges. It's such an intensive, incredible week. They listen to indigenous leaders as keynote speakers from um, varying, um, varying, 
professions that they can connect with and, and create a network. So um, it's something we haven't done since 2019, obviously, because we haven't been able to have events, but we will be picking it up again once we can have uh, large gatherings again. And uh, the next one we're looking at is either to be hosted in Montreal um, or Manitoba. We're not we're not sure. We're kind of on the fence about that. But um, if you want to learn, I know it's 1030. If you want to learn more about that, reach out to me. We are we are always looking for partnerships for that, that as well to get everything's completely funded by the NRT. We rely on donors and partnerships. Um, so all the youth are flown housed fed for the whole week it's just such an incredible um supportive experience and also just a friendly invitation to check out our website i think our time is almost done yeah. soon right um yeah. to check out our website for more information um and keep your eye open because it's getting rebound in the next few months and it's going to be much more interactive and up to date um and then also to reach out to any one of us about anything and we'll make sure the right person is connected with you to have conversations about whatever whatever it is that your inquiries are about and we're thankful for your time. Um, it's uh, we know you're busy, we know you're busy doing meaningful work and we need each other in this work, so thank you for allowing us to share how we intend to and how we participate in, in doing our best to support that. The work that you do in the communities that you support. Yes, thank you all so much. It was great meeting you all too.